Well, my name is uh, Hubert Rees, and um, I'm a retired scientist uh, living in Aberystwyth in Mid Wales. Okay, well, um, my father died in 2009, and soon after that I was involved in, in preparing notes for his obituary, and uh, this was being done under the auspices both of Aberystwyth University, where he worked, and on behalf of the Royal Society, which later published a memoir of his life. And so I, I felt that I could contribute something about um, missing data, if you like. And w w one of those areas was actually the details of his wartime experience. And in order to do that, um, I was able to access um, um, a long forgotten document, uh, um, some, some rather um, limited papers that he had, which in fact were notes that he took at the same time as he had uh, been incarcerated in prisoner of war camp in um, Germany, having been shot down uh, late f 1944. And of course, these turned out to be very compelling, given that the period covered uh, was the most um, exciting, if I can use that word, um, uh, leading up to um, liberation, so far as he was concerned, uh, by the Soviet advance, but of course, ultimately, the end of World War II. I, I did indeed know little of his story. Um, um, uh, we were always aware because he, 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 he um, was awarded a Distinguished Flying Cross that that was attached to his name. But he was, I think, fairly typical and, and uh, of uh, modest men of that era. Uh, a, that he, he didn't choose to, to talk and certainly not to boast about his experiences. And secondly, I think it was not in the nature of many uh, individuals at that time, especially those who'd been in the line of fire, to actually expand on those experiences. They'd, those experiences, I think, touched him and others like him very deeply, uh, but they were not for my years. And frankly, I don't, I don't regret or resent that. That is how it was in the family. Um, well, of course, I can't speak for, for his contemporaries. Uh, what, what, what I could say is that it was not a topic com of conversation um, in my teenage years and beyond. And I think it would be fair to say that even late in life, um, any attempt to raise, even benignly, um, um, some of the um, uh, uh, issues relating to his experience is, would be met with, um, not hostility, but a disinclination to engage. And, and this is why I'm saying, I'm saying that it, was a, it seemed to me that his reaction was a very natural one. And I did not probe or antagonise him. I simply didn't do that because it was not the thing to do. Um, but I, I think it would be fair to say that occasionally he did open up. Occasionally this would be in his cups, as they say. And uh, uh, also I suspect rather more so to some of his uh, brothers in arms, if I can put it like that. Because I think it's a classic case of, of the fog of war. Um, the raid, uh, which was a daylight raid on a, on a synthetic oil plant in the Ruhr Valley, um, was conducted in poor weather conditions. There was a, a significant amount of cloud and there was bombing using navigation aid only, despite it being in daylight. And the suspicion, the suspicion was that at least one aircraft went down as a result of um, bombs from above. That's actually written up in, in one of the books uh, that, that I had on display. Um, one of them actually suggests that my father my father lost his tailplane, again as a result of a, a, a falling bomb, but managed to retain an even keel for long enough for his crew to get out. But the, the, the reality is, however, that you cannot pin it down. It can't be pinned down. Um, uh, some, of course, were demonstrably blown out of the sky. It, and, of course, if a bomb went off when it hit you, that's, that's the sort of thing, that, of course, that did happen. Um, so th to say he was shot down is possibly the easiest thing to say. I tried to, on a number of occasions to say that he came down because I've got a feeling that it may have been an unfortunate accident, but there we are. And not at all uncommon, of course.
It was, um, again, a very close community during the Second World War. I mean, I, I should know, because my brother was a prisoner of war, and I remember the support we had from the community, especially when we didn't know whether he'd survived or not. We had two months of not knowing what had happened to him. My, my brother was a, long, was a, 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 a pilot. He, he flew a Lancaster, and he, he was shot down in November 1944. And all we had was a telegram saying, missing, presumed dead. Of course, my parents went uh, onto automatic pilot. It was awful. And then on um, January the 15th, I was at a party, a birthday party, and uh, her grandmother came in and uh, I, I could make out it was wrong with it. She was hugging and kissing me. You didn't do that sort of thing in those days. You were very austere people. And I didn't know what she was ta uh, talking about. It, but um, the news had come through that he was alive. Uh, somebody had picked it up on short wave radio in Llangenech. And my cousin had phoned us. And uh, by the time I got home, the place was heaving with people, everybody coming to celebrate. Yeah, they were allowed to send messages by short wave radio via the Red Cross. I know on the day that um, he also noted in his diary that um, the tail gunner um, was unconscious for the rest of the day, having landed, and he couldn't remember getting out. Uh, beyond that, no further detail, uh, excepting that he, he was in custody in Essen, I think I would guess the, the police station, uh, for two days. Uh, what I do know, however, is that around that time there were some awful experiences uh, including um, uh, particularly in, in, in that area of uh, industrial uh, Germany where the local population had become so um, um, disenchanted with, with bombing activity that, that, that there were a number of um, murders of um, air crew on landing and so he was lucky and all his crew were. Yes, all the crew survived and they were prisoners until the end of the war and uh, were liberated by the Russians it was not a very pleasant experience for the locals. As I say, I think the feelings, his experiences were deeply felt. And I certainly would imagine that he would have um, felt um, troubled by the, the um, controversy surrounding um, Bomber Command, which started on, on, on the first day of the end of the war um, and continued, of course, and continues to the present day. Um, I don't think that there are, there are any easy answers in a short interview to, to those questions. Uh, and I mean, in, in a way, it's rather sad that he didn't see this rather splendid uh, 2012 memorial to Bomber Command in Green Park. Um, but he would not have been the sort of individual who would have gone to observe its opening. He might have quietly registered that it now existed. I think that's as far as it would have gone. He didn't attend annual memorial services and he didn't, to my knowledge, wear his medals in anger. Uh, the one thing he did do at the end of his life, actually, was ask me to take the medals, which had been in boxes, and get them uh, put on a, a chest ribbon, which I did on his behalf through Spink in London. And he was, he was very grateful for that. But they went back into the drawer. Um, that pleased him, but it didn't in indicate any transformation in terms of his own private view.
Um, well, I would like to produce, um, to, to round off the, 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 the information that, that I've got and, and produce a memoir of sorts and uh, perhaps in the first instance uh, produce it as a privately published document. Um, I've also made a link with um, um, a UK website which has been um, constructed uh, very expertly uh, around 75 New Zealand Squadron and um, this is a tremendous resource uh, and an ongoing one and I have actually contributed quite a lot of voluntary effort in compiling um, uh, RAF um, operational records on their behalf which is now web based so I would like to think that some of this, indeed some of the information about my father's um, fate is already um, recorded there but not in this level of detail and certainly not his POW experiences so, so that would be my ambition to uh, make sure that, that, that it appears in a suitably rounded document with, with the, um, uh, you know, the, the, the explanation as well as the raw information, if I can put it that way. <laughs>